Hey everyone, this week we're looking at a Photoshop secret that can help you enhance the colours in your landscape photography. So have you ever gone out and captured a landscape image where you've got that nice golden hour light, it's nice and soft, but for some reason you've not quite got those colours that you wanted in the sky, you haven't got those vibrant oranges or purples and pinks. Well, this tip in Photoshop will help you inject some of that vibrancy and colour into those images and hopefully allow you to keep some images that you might have otherwise thrown away. It's a little bit like using some of the colour grading tools in say Lightroom, but I find this technique in Photoshop to just be a little bit more targeted and give you a little bit more control about how you inject that colour into your image. So let's have a little look and see how this works. Okay, so we'll start by looking at this image. I captured this somewhere between Yosemite and Kings Canyon National Parks and it was sunrise time, probably just a little bit after golden hour. So the light's okay, it's not too harsh, but because we're just slightly after golden hour, we haven't got those really saturated, bold oranges and yellows in the sky that we might like. So we're just gonna try and liven this up a little bit. So the first thing that we need to do is just work out the direction of light in the image. So you just need to look for the shadows. So here I've got some dark areas here and we can see that just on the top of this ridge here it's a little bit lighter and then dark on the left hand side. So if it's dark on the left hand side we know the light must be coming from the right hand side and dropping on the right hand edges here. So I know that my sun must be coming from up here in the top right somewhere. So what I'm going to do, I've already got a layer created here, I'm just going to get rid of that. We're going to create a layer, so start from the beginning. I do this the shortcut way, just by pressing Command, Shift and N on my keyboard. If you're using a Windows PC, that'll be Control, Shift and N. And it just brings up this little box. You can give it a name if you want. I'm going to call this Sun. Click OK, that's created our new layer down here now. And what we want to do is find our gradient tool. So it looks like this over here on the left. If you don't have that there, let's say it's something like this. You can just click and hold with your left mouse button on that tool, it'll pop out the consecutive menu like that, and you can just click Gradient Tool. So what I want to do now is adjust my, the colours of my gradient, basically, because with this tool I can drag this out here like this, and you can see I've already created a nice orange gradient, but I'll show you quickly how I created that. By going up here, in the top left, you see we've got the gradient colour in this little box, and if we click once on that with the left mouse button, we get this little window pop up and in here we've got this gradient area which shows the left hand side of our gradient and the right hand side and how it fades between the two. So on the top of the bar we've got our opacity settings so you see that is 100% opacity that's set to 42 and we've got zero here and on the bottom we've got our colours so we've got an orange colour, a slightly lighter orange it's the same light orange but it's invisible because the opacity above is set to zero. And we can change these colours if we click on that into the colour. We can actually go into our image and we've got the eyedropper tool now and I can select an area in the image to select that colour. And this is what I did earlier. So it is quite a grey colour at the moment, it's very bland and that's what we're trying to remedy here and fix. But what we can do that now we've selected that grey colour we can see the ballpark of hue that that sits within. And up here in the top right, we've got the more vibrant versions of that color, if you like. So we can bring that up here, more to the top right, and select a more vibrant orange. But hopefully it still sits within the colors of our image and doesn't look too unusual and doesn't stand out. So I'm gonna click OK, and do the same with the other color. You can have as many of these as you like. I find two to three is fine. So again, select a colour in here, picking a slightly lighter colour for this one. So, I'm going to click OK, and then what I can do now is just drag out with my left mouse button a gradient like that, and you see we've got the colour applied, but that's not quite right. What I want to do is actually make a radial gradient. So up here in the top, next to the colour area where we've just clicked on, this option here is the linear gradient that we've just selected. Just to the right of that, we've got radial gradient. So we can click on that 
And now when I drag out from a point, that creates a round gradient. And what I'm actually going to do, because I want the centre of my gradient to be the brightest area, I'm just going to come back into the colours and I'm going to swap these two around. So I'm going to bring this one to the middle and the lighter colour to the left hand edge there. Click OK. And now when I drag that out, we've got a radial gradient, the brightest area in the top right, fading out to a slightly darker orange, fading out to nothing. And that's OK. It's looking a bit more exciting already. But what I want to do now is just change the blend modes of the layer. So we come down here, we've got this layer selected sun. We can click on the drop down here where it says normal and we can choose different blend modes. So it really is just a case of playing around with these to see what works best for your image. I find that overlay or soft light tends to work pretty good. But sometimes hard light or vivid light can give a really cool effect as well. I'm actually going to go for hard light on this one I think. And you can also change the opacity of that. If it's looking just a bit too much, just bring it down a bit. You don't want it to look too unplausible. You want it to look exciting and more colourful, but still look like it's a real image and not something that's been painted or looks too unnatural. So we've got that set up now. And all I'm going to do now, just for a little bit more of a dynamic feel in the image, I'm going to make the other side of the image the opposite. So I'm going to bring down the, the colour and the hue and make it bluer. And that'll give just a little bit of an offset between the warm tones in the top right and the cooler tones in the bottom left. So once again, I'm going to make a new layer, Command, Shift and N, or Control, Shift and N if you're on a Windows PC. I'm going to call this blue. Click OK. I'm going to come back to my gradient options up here in the top left. Click on that. Click on this first one. I'm going to choose a nice blue colour. Something like that. That second one. Slightly brighter blue. And we'll leave that one. Well, I can change it to blue. It's not really going to make a big difference, I don't think. Because we've got our opacities at 100, 42, and 0. So I'll click OK. With this one, I do want to use the linear gradient. So I'm going to click on the linear gradient option here. And I'm going to drag up from the bottom left up to about there. Sometimes it's trial and error with this just to get the angle right. I'm going to bring it up more like that. Yep, that's looking right, I think. And then, again, play around with the blend modes until you get something that looks right. So just play around with that slider until you get it round about where you want it. And you can see the difference that's made to the image. It's maybe a little bit too much with the blue. I'll bring it down. But you do get quite a strong effect and it really does lift your image quite easily and quickly. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at another image now. I captured this one at Morecambe at sunset time, but again, as you can see, we've not got those really vibrant colours in the sky, so if we want to lift this one, we can bring some more purple, pinky tones into this. So once again, onto the gradient tool, create a new layer, click in here, on the colour, use my eyedropper tool, just to select a colour. So I'm going to change this quite dramatically to more of a purpley colour. Maybe a bit more pink than that. Click OK. This one, I'll leave that on the blue, that's fine. I'm just going to click OK. On this one I've got the sun coming from the top left because we've got the shadows on the right here. I'm actually going to swap these around so that we've got this one here and I am going to make this a slightly more pinky orange colour I think like that and I'll select my radial tool drag that out I'm going to find a nice blend mode 
think linear light's looking quite nice there again. Just bring down the opacity. Once again, another layer. I'm going to choose a nice dark blue. I'll maybe keep the purple but make it slightly lighter, maybe a little bit more blue. And I'm going to use the linear gradient, bring that up from the right hand side, get the angle right. Find a nice blend mode. Bring down the opacity. And we've changed the colour of the image there quite dramatically. But what I wanted to show here is that we can actually add in a adjustment layer. So if we go to adjustments here, we can choose hue and saturation. And then now we can change the hue or saturation and lightness of that layer. But you'll see at the moment it's affecting the entire image. So what we're going to need to do is just right click on this layer, click create clipping mask like that. And now when we change that, it's only changing the layer in the bottom right there with the color on it. So I'm going to leave that one as it is, but I can actually drag that below, create clipping mask onto layer one, and I can just tweak the layer that has the sun on it in the top left. So if you haven't quite got the right color that you want, use the adjustment layer. You can play around with the brightness or the lightness rather and the saturation until you get it exactly how you want it. So I think something like that is quite nice. You see that's how it was before and we have changed the colors quite dramatically and I think that looks quite nice. So that's how you can enhance your landscape photography with some really simple Photoshop techniques. I would recommend using these tips on a sunrise or sunset shot. It's not really going to work if you take a shot from the middle of the day and try and turn it into a sunset or sunrise shot. It's really about enhancing what you've already got in your image and bringing out those colours that you might have otherwise missed at the time. But have a play around with it. It's really fun and it can get some great results. Let me know what you think. If you've got your own tips or techniques, just put them in the comments down below. So that's about it for this video. Massive thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it if you subscribe and you're watching every week. But if you're not subscribed and you'd like to do so, you can just click down there on the big red button. That way you'll keep up to date with everything I'm doing each and every week. There's a new video every Sunday morning at 10am UK time. I'm going to get out again next week. I'm hoping it'll be macro, but I'm not quite sure yet. Either way, I hope you can join me for that one. But until then, thanks a lot everyone and bye for now.